Our next guest is a fellow that knows something about writing a few books himself, Greg Fields. He also knows something about the Stubblefield Institute as well. Uh, used to be a director there himself. Uh, Greg, good morning. How are you, sir? I am fine, and it's, it's, it's good to be with you all. It's good to have you back. It's been a few years, man. How have you been? Uh, I've been busy. Um, you know, it was, it was a singular honor to, to lead the Institute um, until Ashley Horst took over as, as the current executive director. But since then, I've been focusing on my writing and on editing for my publisher. And um, actually, I just got back from um, Ireland where I, I was able to present at the International Dublin Writers Festival. Wow. Which to me was just the pinnacle of anything I could have aspired to. So um, it's been a busy time and it's, it's, it's great to talk with you. Do you have some Irish heritage, Greg? I do, um, which I, I freely admit. And it's, it's actually influenced my writing. And, and you know, I, my, my favorite author is Pat Conroy. And Pat once said he writes to explain his own life to himself. <laughs> well, he had that a, resonated with me. He had a lot of life to explain to himself too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was he was a, a, a fascinating character. But um, you know, the writing is just a process of discovery, both of oneself and I think of the world around you. Now, uh, Mr. Stubblefield, in his last trip to Ireland, told us a story about the appropriate way of approaching the bartender and ordering your stout, your Guinness. Bill, would you care to, to ask Mr. Fields about his techniques? Yeah, uh, I found a, a lesson taught to me by vehicle somebody else that had elbowed the way in front of us to get to the bar to get the Guinness. And they were four very large somewhat rowdy individuals and they literally pushed bonnie out to the side and our first night and we we're a little disgruntled until the little barkeep poured him a guinness and they reached for it before the guinness was cured and this little lady very attractive but probably not more than five foot one five foot two uh jumped all over these four guys and said don't touch my beer until it's ready <laughs> so by the time we got to the bar we did not touch a beer. So lesson learned, Greg. I hope your lesson was equal to mine. You know, Guinness has to have a slow pour, and a drinker has to have patience till it's ready. <laughs> Amen. I'm a, I'm a Guinness appreciator myself. So uh, you have a publisher's conference coming up, Greg, from what I understand. Tell us about this. Um, there is – the publishers regularly get together, and one of the things that um, – <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I seem to. Have, one of the things Ireland gave me, in, in, uh, along with the Guinness, was a, a bit of a head cold. So um, no worries. Bear with me. Um, <clears throat> one of the things publishers do is get together and just kind of take the pulse of the landscape because the publishing world is constantly changing. It's so different now than it was ten years ago. And 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 John, I, I assume you see those changes as well. Um, I got into it 28 years ago, and there's a lot of changes. Isn't it amazing? Um, it, it's a totally different world now, but publishers need to be attuned to what one another are doing, what the trends are. Um, the whole digital world has completely turned publishing sideways. And the, the practices and policies of publishers now are much different than they were a few years ago, I, I, I think it's it's probably easier in some ways for new writers to get into, um, to, to be published and to get into the market. In some ways, it's more difficult. Um, it's more difficult to get noticed. But it's probably easier to find the right pathway to get your book into print. Uh, Greg, I uh, we'll get into the publishing in a couple of minutes, but I want to give uh, mention you have three books that published. Uh, one has been nominated for the Kindle Book of the Year. Uh, your books are known for a lyrical component as well, the prose. Uh, you one of your books, The Waters uh, and the Wild, Through the Waters and the Wild. My wife actually read it twice. I've never heard of her reading the book a second time, but she was so enthralled with it, she read it through the second time. So uh, your books are kind of unique in the, fence, in the sense they're a very gentle, very lyrical aspect to them. Well, th thank you. And I'm, I'm honored by Bonnie reading the book twice. I, I, mm -hmm. I have great respect for anybody who tackles it once. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> you're right. I mean, it's, it's a genre... <clears throat> 
excuse me, it's it's um, it's it, it's a joy to write these books, um, and it's also very cathartic. Now, going back to, are you more on the publishing besides the author? You write several books, uh, but uh, I've seen your name associated with both publishing and editing. Uh, do you have? Are you more involved with one one of these aspects more than the other? It depends on the time of the month. Um, I, my my next novel is coming out next August. I just completed that. In the meantime, I am working as uh, acquisitions editor for Kona Publishing, my, my, my publisher. And that probably takes three quarters of my energy right now. Um, it's fascinating, and it's, it's, it's actually pretty joyful. Um, those books that, that make the cut and that, that, that we push forward to, to consider publishing, I get to work with the authors, and, and that means counseling them on the process, counseling them on their work, sometimes editing their work. Um, it, it, it's, it's a wonderful aspect of what I do, and it's, it's made me appreciate the incredible energy and courage it takes to write a book because these people are out there. They're very talented. They, many of them are, are, are I mean, almost all of them are first-time authors, and to guide them through this journey at least a little bit is as gratifying as, as anything I've ever done. So, Greg, the, you're the acquisitions editor. So are the manuscripts that are coming to you agented, or are you going through a slush pile? And for the listeners, a, agent, a slush pile is where people send directly to the publisher. Most mm -hmm. people, what I do is I send it to my agent, the agent. Then right. It's sort of a clearinghouse, the, the first level of, of quality control. But you do both? Yeah, we, we get both. Um, we work with agents. Generally, those are... Uh, pre-published authors, and, and that takes a kind of a different dimension. But one of the things Kohler prides itself on is taking first-time authors and, and, and nurturing them. Uh, they certainly did it with me. And authors come to Kohler with a degree of, of, of with a manuscript, 80, 80 to 85 percent of the books that are submitted never get past the inbox. Um, there's there's high quality control, but once they are, and, and they're considered for publication, then it's a nurturing process. And John Kohler himself founded the company to publish his own book, so he comes at it from a writer's perspective. Um, he takes great pride in the writers that have gone on to greater things just by being given that first chance, and and that's really the philosophy of Kohler. But yeah, we work with with agented authors as well. Um, uh, the, 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 the touchstone for Kohler is quality. The book has to have a certain level of, of, of quality. Marketability is a consideration, but it's not as important as getting books that merit an audience into print. So how do you, are you a literary house for the most part, as opposed to commercial um, fiction? It's it's primary. It's literary. Uh, there is a, a niche in military-based writing, both fiction and nonfiction. Simply because I mean, Kohler's in Virginia Beach, so a lot of military um, people are down there. Many of them write, and many of them submit to Kohler. So they've developed something of a niche in that area. But for the most part, it's it's general fiction, literary fiction, um, historical fiction. Uh, Kohler. It, it's an interesting company because um, it's it's growing. Uh, Kohler publishes about 120 books a year, maybe 10 a month, and they could go much larger than that. But that collegial and rather intimate process through publication would be compromised if Kohler took on too many titles. So because of that and because of the demand and their growing reputation, you know, we're just over – we're flooded with submissions and – that in turn allows us to take books of, of I think, particular quality, and so it, it's it's a nice trend to be on. Um, but to, to any, I, I mean, the, the one thing I would say to any author who has a book that they want published is is stick with it. There are hundreds of publishing houses out there. Many of them have distinctive approaches and distinctive niches. Um, if the book is good, 
then it is likely to find its audience. It's likely to find a pathway. So Greg, if, if you have an author that's fairly well known that you're mm -hmm. working with uh, and you're kind of looking over your shoulder, looking at the deadline, and he has a deadline in about two weeks and only 15 percent <laughs> finished, what do you do to encourage him to finish the damn book? Hire your friends um, to help. <laughs> drink a lot of coffee. And, 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 uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things I find is distractions really are beneficial. I mean, John, as, as, as a writer, you know, sometimes you just get so blinded by what you're doing. You're so obsessed by what you, what you need to do that you kind of lose perspective. And <clears throat> in my case, I'll go watch a ball game or, or, or um, go talk to my wife or, or, or do something just to, to take my mind off things. But it's, it's tough. And, then, and then there are also times when you got a deadline and you're going to be up at 3 in the morning throwing words together and hoping that some of those stick. Yeah, so I spend far too much time doing the former, which is why when I'm two weeks from the deadline, <laughs> it's it's chained to the desk for, for 12 hours a day when, I, when I'm not here. This is my, my morning activity. Hey, I got a question for you as far as um, the, you know, if it's on the Internet, it's true. That's, that's, that's what I've heard. And, and there's a buzz on the Internet that says we don't need no publishers anymore, that all we have to do is we type up our manuscripts and then we self-publish it and we'll, we'll, we'll become wealthy. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that's one of the great strains of delusional thinking in American publishing right now. Um, self-published books are not vetted. They're not edited. Uh, and as a result, they're not... I mean, to be perfectly honest, there, there are exceptions to this, but they're not taken seriously. Um, because they're not very good, and there are exceptions to it. But. There are exceptions. <clears throat> but most awards and reviewers will not come near self-published books simply because there's no quality control. Um, they're also difficult to sell because publishers have marketing streams. They have, have marketing practices. They get their books out there for review and, and purchase. And if you self-publish, it's all on you. And most authors don't do that very well, regardless of the quality of the book. Well, and they don't have access to the, to the marketing streams, you know, the, the distributors and, and what have you. I want to get back to what the topic was in uh, Ireland when you were there talking uh, with the publishers meeting. What are the, the, the big trends that you see coming? And be before you answer that, Greg, hold on one second. I've just been given a traffic text about an accident. The 7100 block of Winchester Avenue is shut down due to a traffic accident. That's by Angel's Bar and Grill. Shut down 7100 block of Winchester Avenue. Avoid the air if you can. Go ahead, Greg. Sorry to interrupt. No, I, I, one, of, one, of the, <clears throat> one of the real challenges for any publisher now is the incredible number of options readers and potential readers have for their, for their entertainment. And books sometimes sink down the list. So one of the challenges is, uh, you know, and this is kind of a, a, an overriding theme, how do you make reading books how do you make books accessible? I mean, we've seen that in the last 15 years with, with the advent of e-books. Um, how, do you, how, how do you, you know, what's the balance between digital uh, copies and, and hard copies? Um, how do you get the word out? How, how, do you, how do you reach new audiences? The younger generation in particular, um, my son, my 25-year-old my brilliant son, has told me, Dad, my generation doesn't read. You know, we'll read, we'll read snippets, we'll read uh, short extracts, but to sit down and read a book that's not assigned by a class or by a professor, we're not going to do it. And and I think that's that's a real challenge for the publishing industry. Um, it's part of the shifting landscape. It's part of the, the the social and cultural shift that we're undergoing in so many different fronts. The publishing's a part of it, and and publishers worry about that. Greg Fields, our guest here on the program. And Greg, uh, by the way, was talking about how Kohler publishes maybe 10 books a month. Uh, one of those books, uh, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, was from one of our listeners, a local mm -hmm. teacher, Valerie Don, who mm -hmm. had her story dealing with her special uh, education uh, son uh, who had RAD uh, published, and it was called End of the Rainbow, A Memoir of a Mother's Journey. 
Uh, Greg took that project from beginning uh, to end. And I'm, I'm grateful to you for doing that, too, because she had a, and does have a very important story to tell. But, Greg, can you tell us a little bit about what that process is like uh, taking someone who's never been a, a published author before? I believe this was Valerie's first attempt, really, at, uh, at writing a, a book and uh, going from start to end with it. Yeah, I, and a lot of it is just communicating about the process. Um, this is what the edits are going to look like. The edits are going to be collegial. You'll have input on this. This is what the marketing is going to look like. Um, in Valerie's case, I, I worked with her on the manuscript um, really before Kohler's copy editors got it because I, I thought there were areas that, that could just smooth the process. Um, and she was, she was very willing and very grateful. It was a powerful piece of work, and it was obvious to me that this is something that, that, that had to get out there. Um, but every, every book has a different – different process to it depending on how much editing it needs um how comfortable the author is with um uh, things like the elevator speech on the book and 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 you know presenting himself or herself as an author um and i work with them on that i work with valerie on that and she was receptive and it was just a it, it was a real gratifying moment when that book came into print um uh, and, and it made me feel good because, you know, she did not know how to go about it. Uh, and Rob, thanks, thanks to you for the recommendation. We were able, to, John Kohler and the rest of the team, uh, were able to to create a pretty remarkable book. Yeah, I looked up her book uh, online. It has uh, um, eighty percent or five star reviews of the mm -hmm. book, so it's obviously found a home in uh, some some people who really appreciate the work that's mm -hmm. in there. So, congrats to you guys. On your website, I see that you publish Rick Pullen. He's a friend of mine. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, Kohler, Kohler's published a number of, of, of interesting authors, um, myself excluded. But um, <laughs> you know, one of the, one of the uh, one of the titles John kind of uh, John Kohler kind of laughs about is is we published the. Um, uh, the biography of, of Papa John, uh, Papa John's Pizza, uh, yeah. the founder of Papa John. Um, we have published a, a number of books that have been translated and are being translated into the visual arts movies or, or made for TV movies. Um, it, it's, I, I will say one of the things that, that is sometimes frustrating is that, as I said before, Kohler doesn't really have a niche. So, you know, as an editor, I'm, I'm reading genres all over the place. I, I, I will say that there is a preponderance of, of, of submissions that have vampires and zombies and dystopian societies. Um, and, and, you know, that's a trend that, that, that tends to be marketable. Um, so it's made me not just a better reader, it's made me a better writer, I think, because I've been able to absorb some of the things I ordinarily wouldn't look at. I also, Go ahead, John. Sorry. I also see on the website that, that um, Kohler is involved with hybrid publishing. I have heard yes. of hybrid publishing. I don't really know what it is. Hybrid publishing is, I think, every, every publisher, including the big five, um, embarks on hybrid publishing. It is essentially a co-publishing venture where um, the author provides some level of investment. The publisher provides more. But it is a mechanism for authors who have potential and who have quality um, to get their book in print and to develop an audience, which is which is which is critical. Um, the Kohler's thinking on hybrid publishing is if if you publish a hybrid book with Kohler, the expectation is that subsequent titles will receive traditional contracts because you are a good enough author to justify a hybrid contract. And during the production and release and marketing of that first book, you'll develop an audience that merits a traditional deal going forward. Um, that generally works. And it's a way for authors to, to come to the fore. I, I'll also mention the, the, the hybrid contracts are not burdensome. They are meant essentially just to hedge the publisher's bets um, to make sure that the publisher can continue to do business in this way and bring um, 
unpublished authors of, of, of potential and quality, bring them forward with, without really risking their own business model. Uh, it's very effective. I think every publisher, um, certainly every independent publisher, I think, has a hybrid component, and, and the big five also have a hybrid component, um, as I found out when I was marketing my first novel. But, um, <laughs> Which I read, it, but it, it is, I think, that's part of the changing landscape, and it's becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, Greg, uh, a subject came up last week when John had one of his uh, co-authors and a or co, yeah, author, uh, also a good friend on, uh, how you avoid boring ideas from others. If you're an editor if or a potential publisher, if you read a lot of, uh, a lot of other books, how do you put a barrier up that you do not borrow some of the ideas that you pick up. And, and I have about 30 seconds for your answer, Greg. Okay. Um, a lot of it is instinctive. Um, I don't think that I don't think anything is truly original. What's original is the interpretation, the author's interpretation of a theme or an incident or, or a narrative. That's what's going to be original. So everything is going to be derivative of something else. I really, really believe that. It's what the author does with it. And if they do it in a fresh way, in a compelling way, then, then, then we go forward with it. Greg, great to have you on the program. Uh, hang out. In the, in the final minute, we'll get the dates of the Publishers Conference and such. Okay, don't go away. Terrific. This segment of the show today brought to you in part by elder care attorney Danny Staggers. Get in touch with him in downtown Martinsburg at 267-3915. Don McLean, born this date, 1945. But February made me shiver. Do you have someone in a nursing home or are you worried about somebody you love going into a nursing home? The law firm of Daniel Staggers can protect your assets. Call the law firm of Daniel Staggers today at 304-267-3915. The Daniel Staggers law firm does elder care law, estate planning, and special needs trusts for disabled children and family members. Visit the Daniel Staggers law firm for your initial free consultation at 133 East John Street in Martinsburg. The Daniel Staggers law firm, when you need asset protection for you or for a family member. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage. Nursery. Shh. Sorry. Insuring it shouldn't be a headache. Erie, number one in the nation for highest satisfaction with the auto insurance purchase experience six years in a row. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent. Not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Your local Erie agent in Martinsburg is Smallwood and Small Insurance. Get a quote at smallwoodandsmall.com. Erie Insurance. Locust Hill Golf Course invites you to historic Charlestown, West Virginia for 18 holes of phenomenal golf. We're just an hour drive from the Baltimore, D.C. Beltway and one half hour drive from Winchester and Leesburg, Virginia, as well as Hagerstown and Frederick, Maryland. Each tee offers challenges across the 35 acres of lakes, ponds, and streams, which come into play on 11 holes. The Blue Ridge Mountains also provide a breathtaking backdrop to Locust Hill. Schedule your tee time today at www.locusthillgolfcourse.com or call 304-728-730. Thank our guests on the program, including Greg Fields. Greg, what, uh, again, the details of the Publishers Conference. 30 seconds. It is in Atlanta on November 3rd and 4th. Um, and it's, it, writers are actually invited to attend it, where um, publishers, after discussing among themselves, will open themselves up in panel discussions with writers regarding various aspects of the publishing process. Great to have in you on. In the meantime, they get to check their own polls. Great. <laughs> Great to have you on the show, sir. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Welcome home, Greg. Take care.